Hey, what's up? It's Adrian from ProductionCrate.com. Our friend David was inspired by this super nice piece of footage here to make a really crazy alien invasion scene and today I'm gonna show you how he did it. First we need to import the footage of course and apply the 3D camera tracker to get that sucker nice and tracked. We want to make ourselves a depth map for this video and this is gonna be a bit weird so stay with us. We're gonna select a bunch of track points on the wall here and we're gonna create a solid to represent it in 3D space. Wow. Now we're gonna draw a mask around the wall to make our solid more accurately represent the building. The moving camera is going to cause our mask to get misaligned, but that's okay. We're just going to animate it a little bit and this is not as hard as it sounds. And then we're just going to repeat those steps with every building until we get this pretty rainbow town. Precompose rainbow town, including the camera. Add an effect called 3D channel extract and that's going to create our 3D depth mat. Isn't that crazy? Have you ever seen anything like this? This is gonna save us from rotoscoping for the rest of the project. We can invert the depth and adjust the parameters until we get this creepy fog look and put that sucker on a screen mode and adjust it until it wigs you right out. We can make different copies of our 3D rainbow town and use it for different things like creating alpha mats for the sky or different buildings and basically never having a rotoscope again. But if you like rotoscoping, I have made a course to show you how to do it better and it also includes section about avoiding rotoscoping in other ways so uh, use it however you want you know let's open up element 3d bruh render crate has a new invader spaceship model so we'll scatter a few of those around the fog helps to keep it looking like it's in the background you could have also used the ufo or even shippy if you're partial to it like i am we do have a history uh is it chill if i just call you shippy confirmed you may now address me as Shippy. On Footage Crate, we have a new bundle of 4K smoke bursts. These are like the mist wisps, except they're huge. We could scatter some freeze frames of those around along with some of our larger smoke elements to add a turbulent atmosphere, and maybe we'll even tint some of those darker. This also helps push our ship further into the background even more, which is great because we want to keep those spooky aliens as far away as possible. But if they do get in, we have methods for dealing with that. <laughs> <laughs> In another copy of the 3D city, we tinted all of the layers black, as dark as my past. This means we can import more of our dust assets and position them as 3D layers in between all the black buildings to give a more volumetric look to our fog. This looks super gnar. To bring in some damage to the environment itself, select some points on the ground and create a solid. You can then hit Control plus Alt plus Slash to replace it with our new crack mat texture from Graphics Crate. That'll work if you're on a PC at least. If you're on a Mac, uh... You think you're better than me? Try adding in some scorch marks as well. Now the street is looking real messed up. Who's gonna pay for this? We'll now add some distant missiles or missiles into the distance. You can download the 4K missiles from Footage Crate and we're gonna rotate them to fire downward into the ground. And scattering those around is gonna create an awesome bombardment. On Render Crate, there's some 3D debris piles, so let's grab one of those and get it into Element so we can really make a mess of things. As always, the best way to control stuff in Element is, wow, there's actually a lot of layers here. Yeah, the best way to control stuff in Element is to use a null object. We just wanna get that lined up with our ground plane. They look pretty good. Let's take a breather and just admire our progress so far. Look how far we've come. Since this dang thing is over 200 dang layers, we're actually gonna render this out and use it as our new background footage to make things a bit easier going forward. Don't be afraid to do this kind of stuff if you're running a bit low on processing power. Next up, we need to add some lasers. Whoosh. Wait, what were we doing again? Oh yeah, so we select the area of the ground that we want to pew and we add a solid, which will pre-compose so we can work on it separately. To make sure everything aligns nicely, let's copy the 3D camera and the footage into this new composition, just as a guide. We're gonna go with this blue electric bolt effect from Footage Crate, but there's a lot of unique options to choose from. There's also some cool sci-fi muzzle flashes and magical beams if you wanna go for a different look. 
especially if you want to go for a completely different look. So we'll import that and we'll copy the position values from the solid to the pew pew. And then we can select a keyframe and go back and use a second keyframe to define where we want it to come from. And we're going to rotate it so it makes sense. Once we're happy with that, we'll make it move a bit further into the ground so it doesn't just sit on the surface like a weird dead floppy pew. We'll create a new point light and position it in the same place. By animating the intensity, we can simulate the light from the pew spreading across the ground. On the laser bolt, I mean the pew itself, we're gonna need to disable the accept lights so that it remains fully visible. There's also a ton of fireball effects on footage crates, so let's throw some in. Just as a reminder, you're gonna need to turn off accept lights for these as well. We also added in one of those smoke burst effects from earlier as sort of a shockwave. It's looking sick, but the colors are whack. Back in the main scene, we'll apply a solid composite, setting the color to black as well as a tint to reset the colors. Using a curves, we can push down the reds and lift up the blues to create a powerful energetic appearance. You can do it with VC Color Vibrance or a Tritone or whatever, but I recommend that you get some practice in on the curves uh, because it's a way better way to control the colors and it's actually not that hard. You just got to learn it, you know? Now we can throw in one of our awesome 4K ground debris explosions and maybe tint it blue to simulate some lighting and we'll animate the blending over time so it doesn't just stay blue because that'd be weird. We're pre-composing this debris now, but we're hitting the continuous rasterization switch to get it to show back up. To create a nice glow, we can duplicate the laser impact and then place it above the debris layer. And then we need to add a set matte and set the layer to the debris, but invert it. We'll add a solid composite to fill the hole with black and then we'll stack multiple glow effects to get something real nice looking. And to get a more volumetric look, we can use another set matte and select our fog we made earlier to make it look like the light is filtering through some of the fog. Tell me that's not sick. You can't! Unless you're dishonest. On Render Crate, there's a new attack drone model that we just couldn't resist tossing into Element as well. Look at that, it's beautiful. If you guys enjoyed this tutorial, leave a like and let us know in the comments what you would like to see next. And as always, make it awesome.